Welcome to uh, Daily Intent, a live streaming devotional intended to encourage you to move from one place in your walk with Christ to another, to help us grow in our daily walk with Christ. And so today we're going to continue our time in the book of 1 Peter, and we're going to be looking at just one verse today, just one verse. We're looking at 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 13. And I just want to begin by saying thank you. Thank you again for joining us, and please feel free to comment and uh, and share with your friends. And if there's something I say that maybe you don't want to comment on here, feel free to shoot me a message. I'd be glad to help you uh, the best I can uh, to understand and apply that to your life. And the other thing I'd like to say, and, and we haven't done this yet, is I'd encourage you to message us. If you have a prayer request in a way that we can encourage you or uh, a way that we can uh, be praying for you and your your family, please send us a message on Facebook. We would love to uh, be here and be an extended church family in the sense of praying for one another, lifting up uh, the cares and concerns to one another. And so uh, today we're going to be in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13. And uh, as I was thinking about this passage, I realized that getting ready in the morning um, is full of decisions. I mean, for some people, it's debilitating as they look at their closet full of nothing to wear. And uh, and so uh, uh, as they try to pick out those clothes, typically they have to start somewhere. And so for me, at least, maybe it's different for everybody, but for me, I start with the weather. I pull up my, my weather app, maybe it's a couple of them because I'm a little, uh, um, a little over compulsive when it comes to those things and look at those things and see what the weather is supposed to be today. Is it going to be hot or is it going to be cold? Is it going to be wet? Is it going to be dry? 
And uh, then I try to figure out what I'm going to be doing for the day. Am I, um, am I going to the office? Am I uh, working out on the property? Am I working in the garden? Um, and am I going to, what am I doing? And so that would determine uh, what I'm going to put on. Um, for some of us, uh, you know, we have to decide, you know, are we going to the store or laying around the house? And for some, that doesn't really matter. They're going to wear the same thing anyways. But in Missouri, the process is not something that comes naturally because the weather changes daily. Uh, one day it could be 90 degrees and sunny, and the next day it could be snowing and 32. And so we have to teach ourselves how to plan and uh, and, and do these things, and especially with children, because, you know, children, uh, when it's 90 degrees outside, they'll come in, <clears throat> come out of the rooms wearing a hoodie uh, like it's winter, and when it's below freezing, they come out wearing shorts like it's summer, and so, uh, or when they're going to be out playing in the mud, they come out wearing their school shoes. Um, we have to prepare ourselves for each day by thinking about what we are going to put on, and that's exactly what First Peter is calling us to do in this in this verse in our passage today. Matter of fact, the word that he uses here is is a similar word that's used in Luke chapter twelve, in which Jesus is telling a parable. and In that parable, he says, "Stay dressed for action," and that and that's kind of the idea that I've been trying to get at today. Stay dressed for action and keep your lamps burning, and be like the men who are waiting for their master to come home from the wedding feast so that they may open the door to him at once when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds awake when he comes. They're, they're dressed for action. Truly, I say to you, he will dress himself for service and have them recline at table, and he will come and serve them. If he comes in the second watch or in the third and finds them awake, blessed are those servants. But know this, that if a master of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have left his house to be broken into. You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming in an hour that you do not expect. And this is exactly what Peter is going to, <clears throat> we're going to unpack from First uh, Peter today, is this idea of readiness for Christ, readiness for Christ. And so um, if you have your uh, if you have your Bibles, you can turn to with me to 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13. You can follow along on the screen behind me. But this is God's word for you today. Peter says, Therefore, preparing your minds for action and being sober-minded, set your hope fully on the grace that will be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Well, let's just begin by the fact that any time there is a Therefore, you have to step back and see what it is therefore. In, the, in this case, it is referring back to the things that we looked at last week. It is looking back to the salvation that was longed for by the angels and prophets. This salvation that we looked at as an opportunity to motivate our own spiritual life. <clears throat> These Angels and prophets, they, they longed to understand these things. The prophets searched and inquired carefully the scriptures that had been written at the time and the things that they were saying in order to understand what it was that Christ was, was or what God was doing. Um, and, and the angels, you know, have longed to see the, the redemption of the sons of men. They've, long, they've looked into those things intently, um, longing to see those things, this, this grace that was given to us. And, and we looked at that last week in this idea of this blessing that comes from God the Father, the salvation that's rooted in His work and not ours, rooted in His grace and mercy, not ours, this, this salvation that is kept perfect in heaven for us. It's awaiting us, and He's, he's uh, keeping us awaiting it. Uh, through faith, he's guarding us and bringing us to this, even though we may have to go through difficult circumstances. Therefore, is referring to that. One commentator puts it this way, the commands of Christian living always begin with therefore. Peter does not begin, uh, Peter, not, uh, not, Peter does not begin to press Christian pilgrims forward until he has celebrated the wonders of God's salvation in the past. Let me try that again. The commands of Christian living always begin with therefore. 
Peter does not begin to press Christian pilgrims forward until he has celebrated the wonders of God's salvation in the past. And so as we prepare, as we prepare ourselves, as we prepare ourselves for action, um, dress ourselves for action, we have to look back and remember all that has been done for us. This is the first step in preparing for action is, is examining the wonders of the salvation that he's given us. Uh, the next thing I want us to do is to uh, have hope-filled minds. Have hope-filled minds. In this text that we read today, he says, set your hope fully on the grace that will be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. This hope for followers of Christ is more than mere emotion. It's not a hopeful emotion. It is not a hopeful feeling. It is an expectation that what God has said he will do, he will do. It is not half-hearted. It is a hope. Uh, it is hope for this, that uh, it doesn't have to work for stuff, but God has already given us everything. So set your hope on what in this passage? Well, is our hope on the end of COVID-19? Is that what gives us hope? Is that someday in the future, this will be over. Someday, um, <clears throat> we will be past this. Someday, um, we will move forward, and that's what gives me hope. What happens if we get to the end of it, and we are no longer encouraged to gather in groups of 10 or less, and we get to shake hands and hug again and gather together and go to the store and find toilet paper without there being a problem, um, and, and you think that's going to solve the world's problems or even, more importantly, yours. No, we need something bigger than the end of COVID-19. We need something grander. We need something more uh, secure and rooted. As Christians, we cannot place our hope in something like the end of a virus. Because you know what? We're not promised that. What happens when this virus is gone and a new one comes? We're not promised any of those things. We have to set our hope in something way more secure. He tells us here that we set our hope on the grace. We set our hope fully. It means all of our hope. Put all of our hope in one basket. Put all of our hope in one place. In the grace that will be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. This grace that is being brought to us at the revelation of Jesus Christ is a grace that has already been accomplished for us the first time that Christ revealed himself. This grace is secure. This grace is finished. It is rooted. This grace is in the hands of a sovereign God that is in control of all things and can protect it. It is in His hands. This grace is being guarded. It is imperishable and undefiled. It's never going to go bad. It's never going to rot. This grace is the kind of grace that can transform our minds. We set our hope fully on the grace that will be brought to us at the revelation of Jesus Christ. In other words, our hope is in a future in which Christ returns. We should long more for Jesus to come back and rescue us in this world from sin and death than we do from the rescue of COVID-19. We should long for more for Christ to come and rescue us from our own sinfulness and anger to come and, and end all of this and make himself known. We should long more for those things. This is a hope filled mind that we have to have. Therefore, set your hope fully on him. And how do we do this? Well, we do this through prepared minds. We do this through prepared minds. Therefore, preparing your minds for action. Literally, the word here is this idea of girding up your loins. Now, I know we don't say that phrase in our own day and age, so let me unpack it. In, in days gone by, they would uh, the the men would prepare themselves for battle or for work by pulling up their their long robes and wrapping kind of wrapping them around their waist so that they didn't impede the way their legs worked. I grew up in a family where you where you work on a farm and you know I can remember my dad anytime he would go to like work on a car uh, anytime he'd go to get his hands dirty the first thing you would do would be unbutton his shirt and roll up his sleeves right. 
That's what he's saying here. That's the mentality that is here, if I were to translate it into our modern culture, is um, roll up the sleeves of your mind. Get them ready to work. In other words, laziness of mind is not an option for Christians. For Christians, we ought to think. We ought to prepare ourselves to think. We ought to think deeply. We ought to think uh, clearly. We have to think because Thinking does not come naturally. Our own sinful desires push us towards apathy and laziness and towards our own ideas rather than thinking about truth. We must persevere with all diligence and intentionality at cultivating our minds, at at preparing our minds for action. You know, one of the reasons we miss out on so many opportunities in the Christian life is because we are not intentional at thinking about them, at thinking about things like how we are going to shepherd our children, at thinking about things like how we are going to care for our home. Yeah, sure, we may have some ideas because we watch HGTV, but what are the things that we think about as we look at our home as it relates to hospitality in Scripture and and bringing people in? What are, what are those things that we think about? We don't think biblically. We don't put our minds in the place where we can think um, intentionally about what we are doing. And that's part of why I've started this devotional is because I want us to think intentionally about the things that we are doing as our day begins so that today, as you're going throughout your day, uh, you come to lunch and you think intentionally about what God says about food and fasting and prayer. As you come to um, your coworker and you think about how God would call you to relate to that, we have to prepare our minds for this kind of ministry. But more importantly, Peter is telling us to prepare our minds to think about eternity, not think about the moment, because each and every one of us is tempted to draw ourselves into our today. And all that matters is this moment that's in front of us and we don't think about how it reflects eternity. We, we, we miss that. We neglect that. And so we have to prepare our minds. And then the next thing we would have to do is be sober-minded. We have to have sober minds. Therefore, preparing your minds for action and being sober-minded, level-headed, clear thinking. We cannot have clouded minds as we think about the things of God. We need to have clear-headed thinking about the truth of God, not be overwhelmed by our emotions and circumstances. Sometimes we just need to step back, take a breath, and think clearly about what God is doing in the middle of our circumstance, regardless of what it is. How can you step back today? Maybe you can take this moment and step back and think clearly about the day ahead of you. Think about it without emotion. Think about it with intentionality. How will I make the most of today? How will I glorify God today and make the most of this day? And as I think about that, begin preparing my mind, as I'm thinking clearly, prepare my mind for action in those things. Not just so I think about them, but so that I do something about them. And as I do something about them, I will do it with a hope that even if I fail, I'm still looking to Christ, the King, to return. We have to think in these ways. So let me ask you this. How are you preparing your mind for action today? How are you preparing your mind for action today? What are you doing? What what intentions do you have for today? After I uh, finish this, I'm going to pray for us. But write down some things that you want to accomplish today. Some things that are God-honoring, God-glorifying, and maybe some steps as to how you're going to do that if it's a a more detailed thing of what you're going to do. So so think through those things and be intentional with the day that the Lord has given you. Uh, I'm going to pray for us, but before I do, I'd encourage you to join us tomorrow as well. Um, And yes, John, I I do agree. Intentional thinking is so critically because uh, our minds are prone to wander. Um, we're we're prone to to wander um, as to what we are doing. Thank you uh, for sharing that as well. Um, And and Aaron, thank you for reminding us that we have to think upon God's blessings 
and promises fulfilled. Those are all uh, very important reminders as we think about this. So uh, prepare to come back with us uh, tomorrow as we talk about um, daily obedience and, and what that looks like. And so uh, we'll be looking at the next few verses in, in 1 Peter chapter 1. I would encourage you, if you missed Sunday's sermon, to go back and, and, and watch uh, that sermon in which we began another section of the Sermon on the Mount, as well as check out some of our other resources that we've been trying to offer on, on Facebook and YouTube. And I'd also encourage you to call a church member or friend today and check on them. So with that in mind, let's go to our God in prayer. <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this day that you've given us. We thank you for the blessing of your word and that it doesn't call us to complacency, but it calls us to action. Lord God, prepare our minds for action. Help us to be action-filled individuals. Lord, not just waiting on something else, but ready and eager to act, not for our own name's sake, but for yours. Lord God, I pray for those today that may be struggling, that may be struggling with some health concerns, or they may be struggling with fear and anxiety today. Lord, I pray that you would give them a, a comfort and knowing that you are still in control and that you have this, Lord God. I pray for the church, not just this church, but all churches, Lord God, that we would continue to be the hands and feet and that we would not just worry about our own, but that we would support a spirit of unity towards one another and encourage one another and promote one another, Lord God, in a way that brings glory and honor to you. Lord, please be with us as we walk through this day. Help us to be intentional. And I pray all these things in Christ's name. Amen. I pray that you have a blessed day.